<clears throat> All right, so I'm Kevin Estes. This is Randy Robbins, and this is uh, Hacking the Apple TV and Where Your Forensic Data Lives. Now, just to set expectations so that everyone is here, you know, has the same understanding, we uh, developed this slideshow based on today being newbie talks. So it's kind of high level, um, and it focuses on the functionality of the Apple TV, um, how easy it is to actually hack it to do what you want it to do. And at the end of the talk, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of, a little bit about at a high level where your data actually gets planted and spread across the Apple TV. Uh, the intent here is to, to kind of offer those that are looking into um, digital forensics uh, or doing digital forensics investigations so that they have a better understanding of the capabilities of the Apple TV and where to start looking for data. That all being said, let's see if this works. All right, first and foremost, the DMCA disclaimer. If you see anything during this talk, either in the deck or that I say or do that you think violates the DMCA and you are the valid copyright holder, please come to me and tell me. Okay? And you have to do it according to all of the caveats there. And I don't know what the hell they are, but they're there. All right. So what is the Apple TV? This is an overview, so we're going to go over what is the Apple TV, what makes it so different, um, how it gets modified. We'll do a real quick discussion on the old way to do it as of about two years ago, um, and what has been going on on the scene for the last uh, about year or so, maybe a little bit more than a year. Um, and then we're going to walk, to, walk through um, two different patch sticks uh, used to modify the Apple TV. From there, we're going to go into the forensics data portion. Uh, as you can tell, we spend a little bit more time on the forensics portion, at least in the slideshow. Um, you know, I do have in-case images. If we run out of time and everyone wants to say, hey, bring that up in in-case, okay, great. We can all do that, or we can all go find a beer. I'll leave that to you. All right. So this is a, a, a really good image for, from a couple different levels. Um, one, it's very pretty, and two, it shows actually how hot the Apple TV tends to get. Uh, we'll talk more about some of the basic hardware functionality in Apple TV in a minute, but do notice that compared to the laptop that's sitting right next to it and the human hand, the Apple TV is real easy to spot with thermal imaging. Okay, And I like this just because I like it. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I am getting an Apple TV. <laughs> All right, so what is the Apple TV? All right, so first and foremost, it is a digital me media player. Um, it is based on uh, OS X, works with iTunes and iPhoto. It has built-in 802.11 A, G, and N. Uh, uses QuickTime media components to play different digital media. Um, and because it is the Apple TV operating system um, that is based on OS X, it can be modified very, very easily. All right. So the basics of the Apple TV OS, it is built on Darwin, which is, you know, BSD, I'll say Unix, uh, which is the back end, of course, of Mac OS X. Uh, it does use the front row um, application adds its graphical user interface. Uh, we'll look at that in a couple of minutes. It does not have any DVR capabilities. This is a playing device only. Uh, and in general, it syncs with iTunes and iPhoto. So just a quick note on that. If it syncs with iTunes and iPhoto, then you're not just looking for an Apple TV if you're looking for something in someone's house, right? All right, so it's built on Darwin which is a full kernel system uh, for stability purposes. Um, and it does use kernel extensions just like um, Mac OS X. So basically, if there's a problem in, in Mac OS X, there's going to be a problem in the Apple TV OS. Same thing for features and functionality and all of that good stuff. Um, if you want to know more about the uh, uh, 
internals of OSX. Uh, you can get with me afterwards, and I'll give you the name of a guy named Dino. I never can remember Dino's last name. And Dino, uh, Dino's done a whole lot of work on that. All right, so the front row interface. Um, the one with the big red X, that's the default menu for Apple TB OS 1.1. Um, and the bad thing about it is, is um, you can't really get these screenshots very easily uh, without the, the Apple TV being already modified. Um, so you will not see the uh, version for Apple TV OS 2.4, which is up on the screen there. Of course, that one's been modified. You'll see that in a minute. Um, OS 2.01. Uh, same thing. So basically the biggest thing about OS 2.01 is they introduced the genres category in the movies section, which, hey, that's nice. Okay. One of the other capabilities of Apple TV is it integrates um, very, very well with the iPhone as a remote control uh, medium. So you can see on here is uh, two different uh, components. One is the iPhone remote application from Apple. Um, so it's uh, four bucks or something like that, five bucks from the uh, application store uh, from iTunes. The second one is um, the Romote application. Uh, the nice thing about Romote is once you install the helper application on Apple TV OS, you can actually use your iPhone um, as a keyboard and a mouse as well. Uh, so there's a lot of great functionality there. And we'll get to uh, some of the places and things you can do with that in a minute. Um, the basics for the iTunes store is, you know, you can go out, download movies, um, high definition, standard definition. Um, the nice thing, I think, from a usability perspective for people is it does allow you to actually look at uh, other movies and who, who actually starred in them and all that good stuff. It does sync with iTunes and iPhoto. Um, as the note tell, says there, you know, if you have a HIDs or firewalls and you know other security devices, it's going to cause problems. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, on this is a Randy screenshot, but I know on on uh, mine, I'm, I always have to go in and disable my firewall instead of just um, adding the rules because I'm too damn lazy. All right, so how does it get modified? Two different ways to modify the Apple TVS: the old way and the new way. The old way required you to remove the drive, uh, which meant you voided the warranty. Um, you had to copy over scripts and binaries uh, manually, uh, just you know, plugging a drive into something. You'll see that in a second. Um, generally, it's more reliable. Things tend to work a little bit better. Patch sticks are, are uh, good solutions, but sometimes they don't work very well. If you've ever jailbroken your iPhone, um, and you've done it more than once, uh, you know, you'll understand that, yeah, sometimes it works, uh, sometimes it doesn't work so well. So the new way is um, kind of a, a take on the point-click hack type of thing from some of the automated uh, penetration test tools. You know, point-click modify, it's, it's extremely simple. Uh, sometimes doesn't, stuff doesn't work um, or install very well, but really the, with the reliability, um, you know, you reboot, keep the USB patch stick in there and try it one more time. Uh, generally works very well. On the old way, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on, on these types of slides, um, just to give you a, a real brief overview. On the old way, yeah, you had to actually take it out, connect it. Um, uh, Generally, you'd want to image the drive in case you hosed it. Um, in this case, I used DCFL DD um, just so that I could uh, hash it and make sure that I didn't have any bit for bit errors or something. Um, then you had to actually copy over some of the binaries for um, SSH, uh, which was time consuming and a pain in the ass. Um, enabling VNC, same thing. Um, it was not very easy. Uh, as you can see there, you had to basically download Bind VNC, install it on your machine, let it run on your machine, copy over the plist. Okay, in enabling the kernel extensions. All right, kernel extensions, for those of you who don't know, are those components that interface with the kernel and allow you to load basically drivers, right? So if you want to use a mouse, you need a kernel extension. If you want to use a USB drive, you need a kernel extension. On Apple TV OS 1.0, Apple said, well, let's just 
use OS X for the Apple TV, and they threw everything on there. And they made some sim links, and they made a couple of different directories and uh, partitions, but that was basically it. So you had everything you needed. As of OS 1.1, they looked around and were like, oh shit, people are actually using all of this stuff. So they started removing it. So as the game goes, someone out there, a couple people out there actually looked at it and said, you know what, um, no, we're going to make a way to add this back. So uh, patching the kernel manually, um, bringing over the kernel extensions, uh, loading them up, uh, the process, I think, probably took about a, an hour to actually walk through it. <clears throat> Once everything loaded, of course, and you enabled it, you know, run disk util with the list so you can actually see, hey, great, it did find my U USB drive. Um, and then, of course, you can actually make a sim link to where it uses only what's on your USB drive. So all of a sudden, you're no longer storing digital media on the Apple drive. So you think, well, I'm going to put this on another drive. I'm going to put thermite on it, and that way if they kick down my door, everything's going to be gone. I won't have to worry about it. All my files are on this thermite-packed USB drive. We'll get to how that's wrong in a minute. Then you actually had to install uh, Awkward TV, which gave you the capability to install all of the other great programs. And we're going to get to some of those in a second. One of those is Parian. So if you use a Mac to play media other than what you can download somewhere out in the middle of, you know, TV land, um, you're going to need Parian because you want to play um, other types of media because Parian will actually let you do something, do play things other than MP4s and H.264 encoded media. So you install Parian and then all of a sudden you can rip your movies, download them, copy them, play them on the Apple TV, you're done. So your Apple TV is, has probably three times the functionality. And if you haven't seen that movie, that's a really good movie, The Hangover. I felt like that this morning. I didn't have a chicken. <laughs> I didn't have a chicken, but I kind of felt like, what's his name? All right, so the new way. Patch stick summary. So all patch sticks basically do the same thing and they start out the same way. It does require a USB drive. You do need boot EFI from an existing Apple TV Apple TV OS disk image, right? So the boot EF, EFI is, I don't know, in, in, in the Windows world, um, basically the, what? What? NT loader? Okay. So I was going, I was going somewhere else. So, all right, from a Windows world, so it's basically like NT loader. So it's the only way you're going to be able to actually boot up the Apple TV is if you have this boot AFI. So all patch sticks have that. They're all based on some version of bootable Linux, every one of them. Um, and I have not found one yet that actually does not enable SSH and add your front row or finder appliances, right? Wait, what did I put on there? Oh, okay. It adds a finder app about appliances, yeah. Um, they are all made for use with people with a basic understanding of computers. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of knowledge, right? You're not probably not going to have your grandmother do this, um, but if your mom's been using computers for, you know, 10 years, she'll be able to do this. All right. So we're going to talk about one of the commercial ones right now. Um, generally, I have not been very big on the commercial patch sticks uh, because there are some really good free ones out there that, that do a whole lot uh, and uh, enable all of the important things. The one thing I did find that's nice about ATV Flash is it actually does install a little bit more functionality, um, including the ability to run Firefox. Uh, without having a, man, a lot of manual hacks. Uh, the code is, is fairly clean. It's commented. Um, I do not know how they are as far as their yearly updates. Um, I haven't done that for, you know, three years. But it does, uh, does work fairly well. Um, and it will integrate with uh, the Neato TV Smart Installer, which is important. You'll see that in a second. Uh, just the basic process on it, you know, select the USB drive, it calls home, 
but it does, as far as I can tell, um, it only does so in order to check and see if there's an internet connection. Um, it does require an internet connection so that it can download um, one of the Apple TVOS uh, firmware updates because uh, it's going to be pulling files from them. Uh, after it downloads the update, it's got a nice little checklist menu, which those of you on this side of the room, you may not be able to see it right what, very well. But you can install a lot of different apps like the ATV files, um, Air Control, X, XBMC, and Boxy. Um, and you're a lot, you can disable the auto update. Um, that's an important feature that's in all the major applications. If you don't do that, uh, what happens is, is Apple pushes out an update to the OS and it overwrites everything and then you have to go back and re-break it, which is just generally painful because, you know, if you're like me, you spend a whole lot of time actually setting everything up the way you wanted it. Uh, you tell it what to do. Um, it doesn't delete the files necessarily, so you still have the some of the files that are still on there, at least as far as... Actually, no, actually, I actually think it does delete most of the files because it actually rewrites everything. Yeah. Yeah, your movies and stuff will, are, are, will go away. Yeah. Um, that's one of the, see, the, the caveats to this is, is generally with an Apple TV, you're syncing your movies with iTunes somewhere. Um, on the, the ones that you've bought, the record of your, your purchases from iTunes, will stay with your iTunes account. Roger, correct? So as soon as you reinstall, it'll ask you when you go into iTunes, it'll say, hey, do you want to download all your, pre your movies you paid for? Yep, and it re-downloads them. So you'll lose everything. It's been a while since that's happened to me, so it's, I kind of have to think back. I disabled auto updates the first time I hacked mine, um, geez, three, three and a half years ago. And I haven't, I haven't had it override any of my stuff since then. So, but uh, we can do it here after we're done. So, just to make sure. Um, this is just a real quick uh, glimpse at the file structure. Basically, the only thing I really wanted you to see here is that there is a hidden subdirectory called root, and that's actually what's copied over to your, your patch stick to your thumb drive. Um, all of the, the directory structure uh, of the applications, uh, including the plist for couch surfer and everything else, um, at the bottom of the window, which you actually can't see on the slide here, um, it has everything you need in it. Okay, so this is basically a mirror image of what gets copied over onto your thumb drive. Um, that's just a snippet of the code. It's very pretty. Um, now we'll just go through a quick overview ATV, ATV USB Creator. What we're going to do, just so you know, is we're going to do ATV USB Creator, um, and uh, then we're going to demo it on this box over here. Um, do you want to go ahead and walk them through Neato before we do that? Um, you can't. Just do that. Let's go back through there. Okay, we're going to get a little bit out of order here. All right, so we're going to talk about some of the popular applica applications, but one of them is Neato TV, and we're actually going to set up to, to run Neato here in a second. Um, so Neato TV is installed by just about all the patch sticks. Um, it has a, a just an enormous amount of functionality. Um, it'll install all the kernel extensions that you need, um, allows you to view RSS feeds and uh, a lot of third-party applications. Uh, it does mount your uh, USB drives for you, gives you access to uh, streaming uh, media as well. Uh, as you can see, the RSS menu is not, it's not very functional because it's all text-based. So, and I haven't found uh, or tried to put a different RSS reader in. Um, does have a, a large back-end uh, functionality for settings. That's actually where the best thing is. Neato TV has what's called a smart installer, and the smart installer will actually go and download everything it needs to install the new applications, including Perian and all the kernel extensions, uh, uh, all of the updates. Um, 
the utilities menu is nice on it because it actually uh, goes through and you have a, a lot of different utilities for you know rebooting uh, the the app the Apple TV or restarting Finder or whatever, and it gives you access to the console. And as you can see up on there, SSH and all that. Oh, you're walking through too. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. So, um, da, 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 da. do me a favor. Go back on to the files up the top, all the way at the top. And then enter. Okay, so I just threw a couple movies on a thumb drive and stuck it on there a little bit ago. And you'll notice it automatically pulls those up. It mouse the thumb drive. You can see a little disk image of them. You see a little graphic of them, right? It'll go through and play. Now, right now, I have it playing through something called M Player. Neato TV will install two different, we'll have two different players in there. One is M Player, which is an open source media player, runs on OS X. And the other one, of course, is QuickTime. So I have these set to play through M Player. No. I'm sorry? Uh, no, those are our MP4s, actually. Um, Xvid will play. Uh, and if you set up, you can. There's a little checkbox in Neato TV, and you can have it play in mixed mode, and it'll actually pick which player to use. Petroska? I'm not sure. MKV files. Um, M player, I think, does play MKV files. QuickTime, uh, even with Parian, it has problems with it because uh, I, I I did that with the, some of the MKVs. And I actually had to force it into M player. I had to take it off mix mode. So I stopped using them. Sorry, my goon radio. Um, okay. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I don't think. Nah, you don't need to go through that. Let's go back up real quick, run through a, the ATV USB creator. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to run ATV USB creator. Um, if you notice right now on the, on the menu, um, yeah, go all the way up to the top. So we'll walk through, uh, we'll look at some of the apps later. This launcher menu is installed by ATV Flash. Um, or ATV USB creator. There's also going to be a software menu in a couple of minutes. So we'll look at that in just a second. But let's just walk through some of the the overview of USB creator. I'll let Randy do that. How y'all doing? Um, so that was my part of this uh, presentation, playing with ATV USB creator. Um, it's uh, basically an open source patch stick. Um, it takes your um, it takes your uh, USB stick, reformats it, repartitions it, makes uh, uh, two partitions on it, a hidden partition that uses the boot Linux, and it puts a visible one in there that runs the uh, 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 scripts from. It's on uh, Google Code. It's uh, managed by one guy. I wasn't able to find out any more information about him than uh, what was on the page. Um, it adds uh, all the stuff that uh, Kevin's described from the SSH utilities and file utils um, and the uh, XMBC uh, as well as Boxy to your uh, capability to install. <coughs> Basically, uh, not all uh, thumb drives are created equal. Um, some of them don't function well with the way the um, creator uh, reformats the drive, so you need you might you might have to play around with that a little bit. Make sure you're doing it on the right disk. Um, make sure you check your uh, disk disk finder or uh, other drive disk manager. Um, <clears throat> Click create using uh, button down below and, and it will create it. 
you can select a different DMG if you want. So if you're rolling your own uh, Uber ATV recovery uh, DMG, you're welcome to um, insert whatever functionality you want into it. In about two minutes, it'll make a uh, ATV USB uh, patch stick. Um, here's a basic layout of the uh, of the scripts. It's very similar to uh, ATV uh, Flash. However, the, uh, the, the it's it's a very simple layout. So if you wanted to add more stuff into it, it would be very easy, um, as you'll see uh, later on. But I'll just kind of give you a layout of the drives right there. Um, after it's created, the disk S, uh, disk 2 S1 is uh, not visible when it's mounted. Uh, <clears throat> and similar to ATV Flash, uh, it's got uh, a, a, it's pretty good code. It's commented. It uh, um, You can go through it and follow through it. Basically, it, it uh, sets up links and then and, uh, runs uh, install.sh scripts from the uh, other root, from the other uh, subdirectories. So you could add your own additional install uh, shell scripts and do, and add whatever you wanted to to into the process. And once you're uh, done, you have the uh, um, modified Apple TV with your uh, menu um, whoops uh, and the software menu that Kevin was talking about um, this you notice it's not on this one yet but when we uh, run the uh, patch stick on it it'll show up on it when we reboot it so are we ready to do a demo Yeah, that's the only user that's on the system by default is front row, <clears throat> and it's the. the question, the question is about, hey, So let's let this boot up. You can see it's actually loading the, uh, I can't see what it's loading from here. Um, but it looks like the, it found the patch stick. So while that's going, uh, your question is about um, the default user for SSH. Apple TV dot local. Um, is yes, you can get to it at you know front row at Apple TV local if you're on the local segment, right? So you're not going to do that across across routers and the internet. Yeah, if you're on a Windows machine, you'd use Putty or something like that, and you could still get to it at SSH. You know, front row at Apple TV local is going to go, sir. Yeah, it's going it, to Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um does it? Okay. Yeah. She says, yeah? Okay. Okay. I'm not the, you know, my seven-year-old has a Windows machine and that's it, man. <laughs> Everything else in my house is a, is a Mac. All right. Um, would you believe that in uh, the, I live in Texas and um, the schools there moved from uh, Macs to Windows. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure why they did it. Now, you'll see right now that this Apple TV uh, is booting up in verbose mode. 
Um, that's just another option that you can do once you actually get um, SSH access to your to your Apple TV. So I have mine boot up in verbose mode, just like I have my laptop and my minis and everything else, just so I can see <laughs> what's taken so long and what failed to load. So hopefully this will actually come up and we'll have a software menu in a second. Um, just so you know, to make the patch stick for ATV USB creator, I think is, what, five minutes? Most. Yeah, I mean, it's it takes nothing. Um, hopefully this will finish booting in a second. Mine has a 40 gig hard drive. Um, they are selling with 160 gig now, sir. Oh, the patch stick? Ah. Relatively small. They, they recommend about 256 or greater. Yeah, they recommend 256 or more, but I, I have a, a 4 gig uh, sand disk and uh, ATV flash just would not work. I threw it on a 256, it worked fine. <laughs> yeah. They're not all created equal. You know, sir? There's no way that it can do what? Mm, I believe that I it'll do t 1080i. Yeah, it'll do 1080. I don't think it's P. I think it'll do 1080i. No, I don't. I I don't know of one. No. I don't know of one. Yep. Um, okay, so on the software menu, which is new, we can go in, go up to third-party plugins, and, uh, yeah, let's see if it'll go. And it's thinking. <laughs> Yay, the little guys are smiling on us. <laughs> yeah. You have to, honestly, we've been pretty lucky with the whole demo thing today, so. I'm, I'm not too unhappy. All right, go ahead and back out. See if it'll back out. And go to manage built-in and see. All right, so everything's shown. So you can actually go in and uh, decide on on which of the plugins you wanna you wanna show. Everything's shown. Go back out. And one more time for the plugins. All right, so it may take it a second. Let me go ahead and go down, see what we have after this. Um, okay. Sir? Yes, it does. It did. Yeah, you know what? Either do uh, check. Actually, don't do check for updates. Go back out to the main movie menu and see if it'll if it'll pull up the iTunes. Top movies. Nope, it's got access to the internet. All right. So the key point here is that with the software with ATV USB Creator, it's that easy to hack the Apple TV. It takes just a matter of minutes and you've included all the functionality. You have a question? You know, I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. The, the question is, is, is if I think Apple TV might disable booting from the USB uh, device. Uh, you know, I, I guess my answer is, is twofold. A, I don't know if that's actually possible. Uh, just because of the the way USB works, um, and B, I 
don't know that they would do it even if they could. Uh, so far, they've left the Apple TV community completely alone. That, that you know, you don't have cease and desist orders and stuff like that. Um, you know, as the question of the the question of whether they would is, is a good one, uh, primarily because you know you've seen this with the iPhone that uh, all of a sudden they uh, an application gets uh, denied because it duplicates duplicates some type of iPhone uh, functionality, um, right? So you know whether or not they would start doing that on Apple TV, I don't know, but I I'd, I'd like to see them start building in some of this functionality actually you know i wouldn't hack the dang thing if it would come out and 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 be half as functional as it uh, as it is unhacked you know why in the hell are you gonna do it you know i i want to ssh you know i want to uh use a firewall um i want to be able to surf the web on on my couch i'm freaking lazy <laughs> you know so all right what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and, what time are we at now? Because I want to, we need to get into some of the forensics here soon, too. Uh, it's 3.35? Yeah. Okay. So we have more than enough time. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do right now, um, we had uh, set up for the Neato TV demo. We already kind of walked through that. I want to kind of look at Boxy. Oh, so it is, and it was, and it wasn't. Anybody doing any wireless hacking in here? <laughs> no, we should be uh, connected on your uh, hardwired speaker LAN, unless I unplugged it. Solid on? No. Here, we can go straight to well, just on the speaker LAN. We're not doing anything else to the to it, are we? No. Are we going to do any? No. So. All right, so whoever raised his hand a minute ago about the inner check for updates on the software menu, that was you? Yeah, so apparently the top movies was cached. may need to reboot. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and do the try the check for updates, but Yep, they're showing now. In all honesty, I don't use the software menu that much anymore. <laughs> all right, go back to the plugins and yeah, scroll down a little bit. Okay, so here in the software menu, you can actually go ahead and install Neato TV. Um, so basically, once you install Neato TV, it's going to install all of its subsystems. Uh, you can install uh, Couch Surfer, which is a version of Safari that was modified for use with the Apple TV. Um, and uh, of course, Sapphire, uh, which is uh, basically another interface for a media player. Um, I don't, I don't really use it very much. Um, and then XMBC Launcher. Uh, which will allow you to um, play uh, or launch XMBC, of course, and uh, Boxy, which we're going to go over here in a second now. So anyway, the point being is that it's real freaking easy to go ahead and do this. Um, go ahead to Launcher. Oh, well, did you just install XMBC Boxy or what? No, but that's Launcher. Yeah, see if uh, my launcher menu is still there. 
since we ran both ATV flash and, and ATV USB creator on this. I think it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, try to try to launch Boxy. And let's see. Wow, we were doing, we were so lucky for so long. <laughs> yeah, you know, reboot it. Yeah, reboot it. No, it just, it. I think it's the, uh, all right the main the main idea here is that for people who don't know what the Apple TV is give you an idea what the Apple TV is doing or can do for people who are in law enforcement and um, maybe doing investigations this is a good idea to understand what the Apple TV is capable of so that you know where to start looking so that's why we've kind of spent uh, a little bit more time on the applications and the functionality just to kind of to help people who need to find that that needle in the haystack. No, you don't want to do that because I'm not going to be able to log in here. I'm not I'm not going to put my credentials in. Reboot it. <laughs> Reboot it see if my menu comes back. If it doesn't you guys can just visualize what Boxy is supposed to look like. How paranoid is that? I'm on the speaker land up here and I'm like, yeah, uh -uh, no, I don't think so. You guys look dangerous to me. <laughs> Sir? No, not they added a larger hard drive. I think it was last year. Yeah, I mean, it, everyone's hoping for you know the the new Nvidia Nvidia GPU and you know things of that nature. Um, but no, nothing. They, they, it's almost like it's been lost and forgotten by them. Um, you know, we're the community was kind of excited because of the integration with the remote and everything else and the the updates on the 2.4 for integration with the iPhone. Uh, but so far, we haven't heard anything. It's that, you know, maybe, you know, after they're done with their netbook, we'll get one. Um, I think there may have actually been, I have the older, the first version uh, with the 40 gig hard drive. I think that they had a little bit faster CPU, but I don't think it was anything major. Uh, quite honestly, I don't, I don't track it as, you know, uh, uh, very closely as far as that goes. Um, I, if you, if it's probably easier to replace the hard drive as far as stability goes, um, just because the kernel extensions, uh, sometimes they, they load at, at startup. Sometimes uh, they don't, so you'll have to reboot. Um, you know, so for me, I have you know I have four kids at the house, and uh, generally it's a, it's a pain for them. You know, so I've had to teach them how to how to reboot the how to reboot the Apple TV or or turn the USB drive off and turn it back on. Um. Well. They, it's it's actually the, if you have some spray adhesive that you can get from the art store, um, when they you can just spray that back on. That's it. There's there's some Torx head screws underneath. There's four Torx head screws. So um, 
No, it's not like if you've ever tried to open a Mac Mini, <laughs> you know, with the, the spatulas and everything. Yeah, no, it's not like that. And it's not like one of the MacBooks where it's like 18,000 screws either, right? No, it's four screws, and then there's four screws that hold on the hard drive. So do we come back up? Great, I, I think we broke my Apple TV. There it goes. Now, see if I have the launcher menu that's back. I mean, did it? No, go go down. See if it put it down on the bottom. Tip: yeah. Do not use them together. Yeah, <laughs> I actually had used them uh, when we were uh, preparing for the talk. I actually had used both of them together, and um, it actually worked fairly well that time. Um, did not this time. Someone had a question? Yeah. Yeah, you can actually install Apple file sharing, SSH, and uh, FTP via Neato TV. So right there on the services menu. So it's 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 pretty simple. All right. So we're, we can't do the boxy walkthrough, um, but uh, you'll see some of the the remnants uh, from boxy uh, here in just a second. All right. So the other portion of this is uh, that give you some information on on where your data is being stored on the Apple TV, um, and also the investigator uh, an idea where to look. Um, the high level issue here is that um, the way Apple has made the Apple TV with uh, separate partitions is that um, it's kind of like a, a, a little data fairy came through and just sprinkled your shit everywhere all over the drive. It's all over this machine. <clears throat> Oops. Okay. So some of the big ticket items. So we're going to talk about a hardware analysis from a forensic examiner perspective. So what an examiner needs to, to understand and be aware of when they start doing an investigation. We're going to talk about a software summary from, summary from the same perspective. Um, if, if you don't know by now, this is kind of uh, part of what Randy and I do in our day job. So we're trying to kind of spread the joy. Um, talk about some of the file structures. Uh, some of the basic forensic considerations. Um, and then we're going to take a quick look at uh, some of the important directories on the Apple TV and some of the areas where data is stored. Uh, the biggest issue on the hardware, from the hardware side, it's, it's a very small form factor and very low noise. There's no need for a fan or anything else on this box. Um, the biggest issue um, as far as noise goes, if you want to count it as a noise, is it emits a lot of um, heat. It radiates heat. All right, so that's one key point. Um, it has both 802.11n, uh, which of course includes BNG backwards compatibility, and uh, it includes a 10100 Ethernet port. Um, and actually, I think uh, the, uh, the new version, I think, actually has gig on it. Um, and the video output from the device is processed via HDMI uh, component video, and audio is uh, via optical or RCA uh, composite connections. Uh, so it has uh, a lot of different ways it can connect and store data or uh, transmit data. Uh, on the software side, from the examiner perspective, the, the high-level stuff to know, uh, again, and I can't put you know, hit this too too much or too heavy, it's built on a full version of OS X. So you can do just about anything with this machine. Um, sir? Um, oh, you mean uh, it's not PowerPC? Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so it is It is built on, on the x86 um, so you don't have a, a lot of the um, strangeness that happens uh, with the backwards compatibility for PowerPC. 
Um, you know, it is, of course, the mock kernel, so that's a little bit uh, more difficult to get used to. Um, Dino uh, uh, Dezova, uh yesterday at the Black Hat uh, talk, was talking about some rootkits on OS X, and one of the points that he made was, you know, if, uh, the great thing about OS X is that it makes you feel like you're learning Linux all over again. Um, there's uh, two primary variants of the Apple TV OS. There's the version 1.0 series and the 2.0 series. Um, again, the, the 2.0 or take two, um, the biggest issue with that is um, they removed a lot of quote unquote unnecessary applications. From a software summary perspective, again, high level, it does have a uh, GUID partition scheme. It's formatted as HFS plus um, and by default, should have four separate disk partitions. So the first one is the extensible firmware interface, right? So that's where all your, your data is stored so that your hardware knows what to do. Um, the second one, which is of note, is it has a recovery partition. That recovery partition stores a unmodified copy of the original version of Apple TV OS that was installed by the factory. So you can always go back and recover from the hard drive. Has an OS boot partition for all your boot files, supposedly, and a media partition for all your media files, supposedly. Sir? No, sir. Patch stick does not whack the recovery partition. It, it is left completely alone. Um, one of the major things uh, that you'll find in the Apple TV OS is it takes uh, liberal advantage of symbolic links. Um, this is on the screen over here. You can see uh, pointers from uh, the users to slash mount uh, scratch users um, and uh, mock to mock.kernel. So you'll find that all over the Apple TV. Um, basic forensic considerations on the discovery side. Uh, one of the things that people tend to forget is with a device this small, um, with all of the wireless uh, connections it can make, it doesn't have to connect to the network that's in the house that you're in, right? It can connect to any freaking network. Right? So when you're going in, you're doing an investigation, do a wireless assessment. You know, look and find out all of the, the uh, networks that are around in the area, document them, see if you can't get SSIDs and, um, uh, you know, MAC addresses and IP addresses, signal strengths, all of that good stuff. Because uh, you don't know whether or not the Apple TV is actually connected to the one in the house. Yes, there is. The Apple TV loves you and it loves keeping track of you. Uh, sir? Oh, I'm very sorry, guys. Yeah, thanks for stopping me. So the question is, is whether or not there is a log of the connections that the Apple TV makes. Um, and there certainly is. That's one of the, the uh, directories, actually one of the log files we're going to point out here in a couple of minutes. Um, so, all right. The uh, Apple TV does use property list or plist files. Um, they are configuration files, uh, just like an OS X. Um, you can, the best way, of course, you know, if you're a forensic investigator, you're probably going to be using an Apple to do your investigation of this device. Um, but if not, then, okay, look, a plist file is an XML file. So you can just use any XML viewer or text pad if you want. Um, OS X, this version of OS X, the Apple TV, um, still does use um, NetInfo databases. Um, so the there is a, a Linux um, uh, application that you can still find out there um, by, and you can see it there, by Paddle Software um, that allow you to open up NetInfo files. Um, Generally, you don't have to on an Apple TV. Um, if you want to know what you know uh, directories this thing is connected to and what networks and, and things of that nature, the normal stuff that's, that's stored in NetInfo files, you can find it in the log files. You don't have to look at the NetInfo information to, to those databases. Um, I'm 
it's a lot of people in the in the community think that right now uh, this version of the Apple TV OS, including up to 2.4, which is the current version, is built on uh, 10.4.8 um, and 10.4.9. Um, a lot of people think that it, the next major version that they actually may go um, up to um, uh, 10.5. So at that point, you don't have to worry about net info anyway. Um, as we talked uh, earlier, the Apple TV kernel file must be patched in order to allow you to run kernel extensions. So that file is the first indicator that something is awry. Okay, you, in a quick MD5 checksum of that file, of the file that exists on the Apple TV against your MD5 checksum of an unmodified Apple TV mock kernel tells you, okay, yep, that one's, this, this machine's been hacked. Um, generally, most of the patch sticks do you um, little favor by actually including the old original file on there. Um, I'm not really too sure why they do that because you can't go back once you've already done it anyway. Uh, there's no run times or sub, you know, subroutines or anything like that on the patch sticks that allow you to go, oh yeah, um, unpatch me. Um, all new kernel extensions are loaded in the OS boot system library extensions and uh, Two different places for secure uh, for SSH for Secure Shell. Um, if they did it manually, it's going to be in a user bin, uh, user S bin. I'm sorry. Um, new patch sticks use a version of SSH called Drop Bear, which um, actually is pretty pretty functional, um, and um, that's dropped in user bin. Okay, most of your user data is in users front row. Okay, um, the default user on an Apple TV is the front row um, user. So just about everything that gets stored for your use is going to be in users front row. Um, all, may, most of the main applications anyway. However, as it says on the slide, your data is everywhere. Now remember we said that it has an OS boot partition. That's supposed to be for booting. Um, it's not. The Apple TV actually will store a lot of stuff in OS boot partition. Um, under the file systems area, um, if, you know, Fuse file system, you know, mount uh, SSH shares as a drive, um, that's going to be in there. It's going to put it in OS boot. Um, things like uh, how you enable AFS um, or other uh, types of uh, file services, that's going to be in OS boot. Um, a lot of the executable libraries that are loaded for use with the Neato TV, with Parian, um, XMBC, a lot of those things are going to actually be over in user libexec, right? So in general, if you're, if you're following along and you're used to working on a Mac, these directories at least should make sense and they should sound familiar. Um, the difference here is, is that you're not on slash you're on either slash OS boot or slash media. And if you're mounting it, it's going to look at, it, you're going to see um, it actually includes seed scratch or scratch, which we'll, I think we'll see in a second. All right. Um, just like on a Mac, um, your photos are going to be stored in a photos directory. Um, and it's going to have the same P, you know, XX for your information. Um, that is on media. Um, it also keeps, uh, if you have anything mounted, uh, that's set to mount at boot, so your, uh, auto mount, uh, that P list is going to be on media, um, because it looks at it as, uh, as one of your library preferences. Um, amazingly enough, it's not in, you know, user library preferences. Uh, it's in, uh, the main library. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. And of course, um, we were talking about a known network. So the question, if you look at item number three, media scratch library preferences system configuration. So that information about all of the airports that you've connected to and all of the networks that you've connected to are actually sitting right there for you. Um, as far as I know, and I've been able to tell, that is not cleared out at Reboot. Um, it saves, I think, the last 16 connections. Uh, so it's only cleared out whenever it gets a new uh, network and it goes over that that field. Um, of course, you could go in and modify that plist uh, to where it only keeps you know one, 
whatever. Um, I don't know if you could drop it down to zero. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. Um, and of course, resolve.conf. Um, that one generally, it's, it's primarily used just like on a Windows machine. Uh, so if you want to point um, the Apple update um, uh, web address to 127.0.0.1 so it doesn't update, then you can do that manually. All right. The two main areas where most data resides is going to be in your logs and it's going to be in the applications themselves. Um, logs, the uh, OS boot has a var log partition and so does media. So generally, um, from what I can tell so far, all of your data is gonna gonna write to at least one of those places, and if, and possibly both. Um, the worst part about it is the um, applications like Neato TV. Neato drops in a, a massive amount of data um, on as far as cache files onto the Apple TV. Boxy doesn't seem like it does that much. It does keep some of your preferences of you know your applications where you've gone and things of that nature. Um, The data remnants, just from doing a in case, you know, I did an image real quick in in case. Well, because I have in case, and DD takes forever. Um, and a real quick, you know, dump of some of the images that are left there. All I did was click on gallery in in case and say, show me all of the pertinent JPEGs, TIFFs, whatever that are stored on this Apple TV. And um, I pulled out uh, some, gosh, I think it was over 150, 160 images um, and just grabbed a couple that the Apple TV happened to keep around. All right. So basically the, the, the main gist of the talk on uh, this part of the talk is the Apple TV stores just an, a massive amount of data. Uh, most of that is in the logs um, or in the application areas. Uh, if you're in law enforcement uh, and you want more data about that, come see me or Randy. Uh, we are developing a tool um, for law enforcement, much like the uh, Xbox 360 toolkit, uh, so that it can actually um, go in and, and, and help determine if, a, if an Apple TV has been, has been modified. Um, and uh, start pulling off, sucking off some of the data, some of the pertinent information. Uh, we're hoping that uh, we'll be unveiling that tool later on this year at DOD Cybercrime, but we haven't been confirmed yet. Um, all right, so that concludes the talk. Sorry about the, the boxy um, issue. Uh, if you have any other questions, you know, let us know. Um, hopefully this has been of some benefit to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.